Okay, so I keep getting a lot of questions asking about exactly how to use the server files you get for Ag Skies. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get the server files. Now, the server files are always going to be attached to the version on CurseForge, not on Curse.com, not on the client, on CurseForge. You're going to go here and say you're wanting the 115 server files. You're going to click 115. You're going to scroll to the bottom. Do not click this button. Do not click that button. Scroll to the bottom. The file that says server files. You can open up the page if you want, or you can download it directly from here by pushing that. Either or will work just fine. You press the download. You get that file. Perfect. Now, I use Creeperhost. And I have a handy little thing to block out the IP because you don't need to know what the IP is for my server. Trust me, you don't. It's almost never up anyway, except when I'm testing. So, however, I have already got it stopped, so we're good there. Um, no matter what service you're using, before you start modifying your server, make sure you have the server stopped. Don't try and do it while the server is up and running. It's not a good plan, okay? Now then. The next thing you want to do is going to be to, um, hopefully, your server has uh, some form of SFTF or SSA, some sort of thingy-majiggy that allows you to um, use something like FileZilla to hook it. Because I don't know how to use the ones that don't have that. Now, you unzip the server files, like I have already done here, and you will find that you have Forge Universal. You have the Minecraft server. You have Wor well, you won't actually have World because uh, the server file doesn't include a World file because there's like six different maps. So you'll need to pick a map and make sure you have a World file. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a void and you're going to have to build your own map which is also perfectly acceptable if that's the route you choose to take. You might want a custom map for your users. So, once you have all these, it's fairly simple to get them in here. You select everything except that zip file. You drag it over here. You go, copy! And you let it copy. Okay, so then, once the server has started, the next thing you're going to need is going to be, well, the game for your single-player people. In this case, I use Curse Voice. That's what I recommend using. It works great, and it will give you exactly the version. Now, you want it to say, in this case, version 115. If, for example, you're telling people how to install it, you would go here, you search... Well, in this case, the easiest way to search by popularity. Um, go to versions, and just in case, for some reason, the install button is installing a newer or an older version, the easiest method to make sure that your players are using the same version as you are is to tell them to go to this screen. They get to this screen by just clicking on the mod pack, and then they pick which version they want to install. They push the button, and they install it. I've already done that. I've already pushed play. I already actually have Minecraft up and running, so don't actually need all that. We'll go ahead and um, grab this. And we go to multiplayer, where I have already actually input 
the server information. And we press join server. Let's give it a second. You don't need to see my uh, IP address. And voila, look, we have a server. And we have the default world, which comes preset up with things like um, the recall stones set to go to the different bases, some of the uh, um, the the keys that you'll need for there's some towers, you'll find them. Anyway, that's that's everything you need to be able to start the server. Unzip the server files, drag them to the server, start the server. 